Diogenes goes on to say that Eudoxus was also a physician and a namothetes, a Greek word that means a setter of custom or a framer of laws. He may, in fact, have held such an office since he was highly honored in his home city of Knidos. However, Plato uses this very same word in his dialogue Cratylus in a somewhat unusual context. The question of the dialogue is whether there is a natural rightness to names, or whether they are merely the result of agreement or convention. After characterizing names as a kind of tool for disentangling being, an interesting formulation in itself, the question becomes if there is a natural rightness to names, doesn't it require a craftsman of the highest order to fashion names appropriate to things? And isn't such a person the rarest of all craftsmen? It is at this point in the dialogue in which these questions are raised that Socrates uses the term namothetes, lawgiver, to describe a giver of names. Now, Eudoxus certainly acted as a namothetes in something like this transferred sense when he chose names for the constellations and signs of the zodiac. He was not, however, for the most part coining names, but choosing them from the available pool of names already coined for terrestrial entities. If a name is a kind of tool, as Plato says in the Cratylus, then Eudoxus is not so much fashioning the proper tool as selecting the proper tool from amongst those already fashioned. But one selects a particular tool because he has a certain purpose in mind. And the selection of the proper tool must be done with just as much care as the fashioning of the tool in the first place. It too requires a skilled craftsman. In the next part of this course, you will see the extraordinary care with which Eudoxus went about selecting the proper names for the zodiac signs and the extraordinary measures he took to find them. And right now you should begin to ask yourself the question, what purpose might Eudoxus have had in mind? What work did he hope to accomplish to bring to completion with his nomenclature? I will also be arguing that it was Eudoxus who chose the Greek deific names for the planets. This has been something of a mystery. In Plato's Timaeus, only Helios, Selene, and the star of Hermes are mentioned. The passage goes on to say that the Greeks had so little knowledge of the motions of the planets that either they had not yet been named at all, or the names were known only to a wise few. The passage is somewhat ambiguous on this point. However, by the time of the composition of the Epinomis, thought to have been written by Plato's student Philip sometime not long after Plato's death, the deific names of the remaining four planets had already been assigned. It is therefore quite possible that the naming of the planets was completed between the composition of these two dialogues that is, during Eudoxus' own lifetime.